Today we spent the morning with Dr. Rios and Audrey with our classified staff learning about our role in the lives of our students and the impact that we get to have by being educators in this community. Oftentimes classified staff feels left out of the loop in school districts. They feel not a part of all the development that teachers get, that administrators get, and so it's a rare opportunity for us to be able to work just with classified staff. We talked about how classified staff in their different roles, paraeducator or bus driver or custodian or front office staff or district office staff, can make connections with our families, with our students, whenever they're on campus. Audrey, as a former teacher, she really knows how to connect to the different um, people that are in the room and their different roles that they bring to us. She um, really breaks it down, very simple. Here's what I can turn around and do tomorrow in my classroom, rethink about what I'm doing with my students, how I'm responding to my students, and how I can improve my practice very instantly by just reflecting on the day's activities. So don't ever forget how important and influential you are. It only takes one adult to change somebody's life or think of the student that's so lucky because they have a whole district full of adults that are constantly rooting for them and changing their lives. We want to show exactly what we want to see in the classroom, how we work together, how these different activities bring out the different content areas and the skills and strategies we're looking for. And the people that I see, but I, I never, I, I never uh, spoke before, and not with this ac activity, as an adult, it's also open open uh, doors to communicate more with your co-workers. When we are presenting content, the way educators, all of our participants learn content is by doing the activities as if they were students while still learning the content. I try to make connections with my students in many ways. The latest thing I've been trying is writing notes to my students. And in her presentation, she had a form that had that very same idea where you identify a student and give them some sort of a message of positivity. And I thought, well, I'm gonna keep doing that because it, I got validated for doing that today. So what we really want for our students is for them to have as many trusting, respectful relationships with as many adults as humanly possible. You can never have too many. And we want our students to have as many as possible. And we think about it, hopefully, none of them have none, but many have few. So the way that we can do that, provide those five little pieces of the pie for our students, is to be intentional and proactive about the relationships we build with students. Just as like, as teachers, we're intentional and proactive with the lesson planning we do, the assessments we give, all of those things, we need to do the same thing with how we consciously build relationships with our students and the students that aren't even ours in our classes. So deficit thinking, what it is, is it focuses on assumptions about students from a perspective of what they're missing, what they lack, and what we should do to fix that. And what happens with that is it creates this mentality where you feel like, where the student feels like they can't ever rise above their current level. If you're at risk, your parents don't care about education, you're a behavior problem, you're one of my high flyers. And even when we say that when they're not in the room, we, when we use that deficit language, we give students, adults, everyone an excuse not to rise above. So asset-based thinking, on the other hand, complete opposite side of deficit thinking, focuses on strengths, capabilities, potential, talent. It helps see students see the kind of future that they haven't even thought for themselves yet. If you live in that part where you're just venting about the behavior, complaining about the behavior, and you don't get to the part where you change your behavior, there's not a lot we can expect about the student changing there. We have a model and scholar system that goes with the scholar acronym um, to help educators remember how to respond to behavior instead of react in a positive way. 
you know, in terms of goals for the staff of King City, all I would want to do is continue to work with them in leveling up their practice. As we talk about making 10 degree shifts for all everything we do. We don't want to make a 180 degree shift overnight. We just constantly want to make those 10 degree shifts to keep getting better and better. My goal would be that you know a year from now, we look different, sound different, and we have our students coming back, reinforcing that all these things that we were doing mattered and it's making a difference in their lives.